guys, you're listening to Chick Flicks with me, your host, Alexis Otang. I'm the chick who watches TV shows and flicks and tells you whether they're worth a binge or a skip. Oh my God, I'm so happy to be back with a new episode. And today, guys, we are going to be doing Monsters the Lyle and Eric Menendez story. Now, this show has already stirred up a lot of controversy, a lot of opinions. People have been talking about it all across my social media. So you guys know, of course, I had to do a review. Um, I'm thinking I might also put out a written review about it. We'll see. I definitely have a lot on my plate right now with my last semester of college, but if there's a will, there's a way. No promises, but I'm definitely going to try. So I'm not going to do too much in this intro. Let's just jump straight into this review because there's a lot to cover. So let's first off start, this is the Monsters the Lyle Eric Menendez story. This is the second season of this limited series uh, crime drama television show. Now the first season, as you know, was um, Monsters, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, uh, which was centered around Jeffrey Dahmer. And it was a hit, like people absolutely loved it. Um, This show, is um, created by Ryan Murphy, which this is so in his ballpark. If you know Ryan Murphy, he loves a good crime drama and he's um, written and produced a bunch of them. So when Monsters Jeffrey Dahmer came out, like it it did well in the award show circuit, getting a lot of nominations. Um, the lead actor and the supporting actress both won. Um, Evan Peters, who played Dahmer, he won the Golden Globe for Best Actor and then Niecy Nash, Um, She, I think her name was um, either Brenda. Um, She won Outstanding Supporting Actress at the Emmys. So, you know, Monsters was a hit. It became the second most watched English English language series um, within 28 days on Netflix. So people were all about it. I had my own thoughts on Monsters, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, specifically because victims did speak out. Um, victims of the families of families of the victims spoke out about how they didn't want this series to have been created, that the producers and the writing team did not really reach out to them, did not get a lot of their input, and that there are some inconsistencies. And so, you know, it's not something you really want to hear when somebody's doing a crime drama about a horrific serial killer that the victims families were very upset and so I had my reservations and then I heard that they were doing a second series on the Menendez murders and I have actually already watched a series on this Law and Order did um, a whole season dedicated to this case it was called Law and Order True Crime the Menendez murders and it starred Eddie Falco and that was an amazing series like that was super good so i was just like okay obviously this has done been done before so what is ryan murphy going to do to like set this one apart from the other and that's when i started getting a little worried but i'm getting ahead of myself let's continue with the general information so the synopsis for the show is Monsters, the Lau and Eric Menendez story, chronicles the case of the real-life brothers convicted in 1996 for the murders of their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez. While the prosecution argued they were seeking to inherit their family's fortune, the brothers claimed and remain adamant to this day as they serve life sentences without the possibility of parole that their actions stemmed out of fear from a lifetime of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. So, if you do not know, this... um, this series is based off of a true story. Um, the Menendez brothers are real people. They are still serving life sentences in jail, Eric and Lyle. Um, and this case was one of the biggest cases in the 90s. The 90s was a time for cases. You know, you had the O.J. Simpson case. You had the um, um, the Rodney King case with the L.A. riots when they were um, charging the officers who killed him and then you have the menendez brothers murders so and this all happened in la like california that's crazy right the three biggest cases of the 90s all happened in california so when you're dealing with um a real life story and you're creating a a series around it a dramatization of it you have to be like very perceptive of what you're putting out there you have to understand the material and the nuances to it. 
and this cast is stacked, okay? There's so many like notable figures as well as some um, actors who are just starting to like break out. So we have Javier Bardem as Jose Menendez. Um, I love I love Javier Bardem. I kind of didn't recognize him in this role. Like he fully became Jose Menendez in a way. Like it took me a while to realize like, oh my God, that's Javier. Like I was watching it thinking this is somebody else. And um, I feel like everybody is aware of Javier. He's, recently, he's in Dune, he's in Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm pretty sure. I sometimes mistake him if he's the one in Walking Dead. I don't think he is. If he is, sorry. But um, because there's this other guy in Walking Dead who kind of reminds me of Javier Bardem. It's not him, though. He also was in The Little Mermaid with Halle, um, Halle Bailey. Um, we have Chloe. I think it's I'm not even going to try to pronounce her last name because I did. I forgot to look up how to pronounce it. And I hate pronouncing people's last names wrong. But she plays Mary Louise Kitty Menendez. Um, and then we have Cooper Koch and Nicholas Alexander Chavez as the Menendez brothers. Cooper Koch is Eric Menendez, the younger brother, and Nicholas Chavez is Lyle Menendez, the older brother. And then we have Nathan Lane as Dominic Dune. I think everybody knows and loves Nathan Lane. Uh, he's been in so many things. Um, he's such a seasoned actor. He's so funny too. Um, I think one of his funniest roles for me was Mirror Mirror. That's like such a niche role he played. Um, but that's one of my favorite movies that he's been in. He makes me laugh. And honestly, he's been in a bunch of Ryan Murphy shows. Is I remember he was in the OJ Simpson American um, American Crime Story, um, playing one of OJ Simpson's lawyers. And then we have. Ari Grainer as Le Leslie Abramson. She is Eric's um, defense attorney and the lead defense attorney for the brother's case. Now on Rotten Tomatoes, this show has 55% for critics and 51%. Now as of today, I'm pretty sure that increased, but when I took the screenshot, it was 55% and 51%. I think it still stayed the same for Critic Store and it rose to about 65% for um, audiences, but guys, it's like, that's still low. Like that's very low, especially for a Netflix original series, especially for a Ryan Murphy series. But is that how I feel? Well, let's get into it. Actually, I lied. We're gonna talk about the controversies first because I feel like it's really important for me to talk about this and to like address it. I feel like there's no way I can do a good objective review without eh, objective i'm kind of subjective because it's my own thoughts but there's no way i feel like i can do a good review without mentioning this and how this is kind of affecting my perspective on the case i'm not even gonna lie so that's why i'm like you know what it's not objective i am letting this controversy kind of shape the lens of how i'm viewing this series and i feel like that's fair because this is based off of a real life case so First of all, Eric Menendez, the younger brother, has already spoken out against the series and he's not happy. He's not even like specifically talking about his portrayal. He's more concerned with how they're portraying his brother. He feels that Lyle is being portrayed as a caricature of himself, that he's way more aggressive, way more intense, and that anybody who knew Lyle knows that he's one of the gentlest people you'll ever meet. He's such a kind and soft soul. Um, I have his state. I'm going to have a statement up, but just to kind of paraphrase, he says this character caricature of Lyle is rooted in horrible and blatant lies rampant in the show. I can only believe they were done so on purpose. Um, it's sad for me to know that Netflix's dishonest portrayal of the tragedy surrounding our crime have taken the painful troops several steps backwards. Um, he talks more about how he feels like this show does a disservice to essay victims, those who have spoken out, especially male sexual assault victims, because of the fact there's a lot of there's a lot of narratives in the past that have been played out when male um, victims come out that are so tired, that are so like disingenuous, things saying that like male 
victims aren't actually victims and that, you know, um, men cannot be sexual assault victims and that they'll lie and that if you are raped or sexually assaulted, you're somehow gay, like that correlation. Um, and he just goes to talk about how he feels like this undermines all the work that he and his brother have like done these years while in prison to really, you know, do prison reform, to talk about sexual abuse, within men and within like the world as a whole. And honestly, when you're doing a series based off of real life people and they speak out and say, hey, I don't support, I don't think this is an accurate representation. You have to listen, it's a fair critique. Even if they're biased, some people are saying, well, they're biased, of course it's about them. They're gonna wanna be portrayed in a good way. Eric Menendez is either Eric or Lyle um, but both have said that the law and order version is pretty accurate. And so they have literally like watched shows and documentaries and other media forms about them and have given their honest opinion and said, you know what? The law and order one is pretty objective. It states what our perspective was. It stated what the defense was like, what the, um, the prosecution, a lot of these characters, it was pretty like dead on and so if they've been open and willing to see other people's dramatizations of their story i think it's fair to listen to what they have to say about this one right and when it comes to social media and people talking about this what i hear a lot is that this is because of ryan murphy that the show feels a little bit like a fantasy inspired by the murders rather than like an accurate depiction of the murders. Um, if you know Ryan Murphy, he, I'm not going to like act like he's not a genius. He has created so many shows. I have to put respect and give him credit where credit is due. There are so many shows that he has produced that have been hits, Pose, Glee, American Horror Story. Like we can't sit here and deny that this man knows how to do good TV shows. But the thing is, Within all of the shows, movies, and whatever that he's produced, I think everyone can admit that there are some themes that continually come up in his work. We have themes of queer themes, okay? We have um, crime themes, morality themes, like horror themes, and homoeroticism. That is a theme that honestly, I've yet to see a show that doesn't have it. Like across the board, almost every single one of his shows has an aspect of homoeroticism, which is not a bad thing, especially if it calls for it. You know, you're doing a show like Dahmer. I thought it was totally fair for him to have queer themes, homoeroticism, and like morality themes in Dahmer because Dahmer was literally all about that. Jeffrey Dahmer was a gay man who could not accept that. And that is why he was, um, suppressing it and it started coming out in some of the most evil and horrific ways known to man. So it makes sense to have those themes. But when people are talking about this story, you can see why these themes would probably not transfer over. Eric and Lyle are not gay. They've stated that multiple times. So queer theory or queer themes makes no sense. Uh, homoeroticism, it would be a very weird theme to <laughs> inject. But like I said before, I've yet to see a show that he does where it's not included. So you can see where I'm going here. He's included it in this season. Um, and now morality, that one is a fair one. You know, you're dealing with brothers who felt that killing their parents were the was the only option for them. They, they said they did it in self-defense. So morality and where does the line between good and evil begin, right? And is it ethical to kill your parents if this is where you're coming from. So yeah, I just wanted to take some time to kind of just address these and like let them know to you guys that this is what people are saying. This is kind of what's happening. It's caused a lot of talk, a lot of um, discussions. There are some people who feel like, you know, Ryan is doing his own interpretation. He's doing it through a different lens that hasn't been explored before and that, you know, it's a dramatization. There are gonna be things that are like kind of bumped up to be more intense or more camp in a way 
because of the fact that it's a dramatization. And then there's some others being like, if you're gonna do someone's story, you better do justice to them, you better consult them, and depicting them, especially when these are brothers of um, who endured sexual abuse, there's a certain respect and a line you shouldn't cross and that Ryan Murphy has crossed that. But let's get into my positives of the show. Okay, when it comes to the positives, the acting across the board, 10 out of 10, okay? Regardless of whether you like the material that they were performing, they performed. They did that. Um, there were so many times in the series where I had to pause it and like stop because I was getting emotional. Like they're, the way that specifically Cooper had portrayed Eric in The Hurt Man, episode five, it's a one shot. So it's one shot. It is Eric at a table with his lawyer, um, Leslie, and you can't even see her face. You only hear her voice. Her her back is to the camera the whole time. And he's talking about um, his relationship with his father and the abuse he endures. And the camera, like throughout this episode, gets closer and closer and closer until we're like up in his face, extreme close up. And the performance, it's a straight monologue. He monologues for like the whole, I think it's 30 minutes. It's amazing. But man, I think he's probably going to be considered for an Emmy for this. I think you hit the nail, dude. Emmy consideration is probably in your sights. It's good. And it's a hard episode to get through in one, not because of the performance, because of the material and the things he's describing and the events that he's relaying and the emotions he's showing. It tugs at your heartstrings. It makes you like sit there and you're like, oh my God, I cannot believe he had to endure this. Like, hats off. It's him as well as Nicholas. Like, even if the version of Lyle that he was portraying was not accurate, he sold it to me. It was a good performance based off of the material he's given. Like, I cannot, like, and it's not just them. Everybody across the board, there is nobody lacking all the performances from this cast are amazing. They do a good job at really pulling you in and really making you want to watch. Like I like I said, material side, controversies aside, if I'm just looking at the acting, tens across the board. It is well done. The cinematography, the look of the show. Am I surprised that Ryan Murphy created a show that aesthetically is pleasing to the eye? No, he's pretty good at doing that. His filmography would say that is what you should expect. The cinematography, the shots, like it's well done, okay? They did that. Um, and I forgot to mention, but some of the other showrunners for, the other showrunner for the show is um, Ian Brennan. So I'm also gonna give half, hats off to him. They did this, it's done well. Um, I truly feel like the set and prop design as well takes us back to the 1990s. Like every single detail in this show was good. And that's one thing I will say. When they were exactly referencing like real life footage from the case, man, did they nail it. It was accurate. There is one, like I saw a TikTok where someone did a side-by-side -side of when they were first getting um, court ordained. I think that's the word. They're first getting like asking, do you plead guilty or not? And oh my God, it's like looking at a mirror. They got every mannerism, every movement, every look. That was crazy. And I've seen photos that um, it's either Cooper or Nick had, I think it's a uh, Cooper. Cooper had photos of Eric in his dressing room. And like, he was literally like, it might've been Nick. I can't remember guys. But one of them literally had photos and they were like, I'm going to become this version of this person in my mind. And they did that. Like, I'm not gonna say, if if I could separate that this show is based off a true life story and I was just watching this as a show, there was like the, the murders never actually happened and this is like an original written story, I would say this is a good show. Like I watched it and it was great. Like these aspects that I'm talking about, 10 out of 10. Like, and the pacing is actually really good too. I don't feel like at any time I'm kind of like, whoa, what's happening here? Because it does, 
as the episodes go on and on, we get more and more backstory. So we do jump back in time. Like there's one episode dedicated to Kitty and Jose and their relationship. So we jump back in time to when they met and then when they were dating and them, you know, getting married, starting to have kids, the beginnings. We jump up in the timeline a lot, but I never, at no point do I feel like it takes away from the story. It makes it hard to understand. Like the timeline is very still clear and they do a great job at that, even though they're not doing it in a linear fashion. So pacing wise, I think they did a great job across the episodes. Typically I complain about Netflix's, like the number of episodes they do, but I feel like this one, they did the right amount of episodes. I feel like any more, and it was gonna kind of just get like, like a little bit drawn out too long, but I think nine episodes was the perfect um, amount. Enough to get all the things you wanna hit, but not too much that it's starting to feel like, okay, when are we gonna get to the conclusion of this? Um, and I will say, if there's one thing I will give Ryan props for in the writing, is that it does make you wonder who are the monsters? Like every person is given a storyline that makes you think, okay, they're the monster. Like it's not, I think the point that Ryan was trying to go was that there's everybody at some point is a monster in this case. Okay, they're doing something that ties the lines. Well, okay, obviously Jose and Kitty Menendez all across, like ethics completely cross boundaries, morality, they're monsters. But if he's trying to see like, okay, were Eric and Lyle monsters or were they victims? I can see where he was going with it. And I will like at least give him credit. I see how he was trying to portray everyone at some point being a monster and a victim in a way. Like we get part of Jose's backstory, which he himself was also a victim of sexual abuse by his mother and his mother was, and it's this cycle that continues. And it, and thankfully it stopped with Eric and Lyle who have, you know, taken a stand and like spoke out against it. But that was something that I think Ryan was trying to um, portray in the show. And I, I did get that. Now, did everyone get that or was that overshadowed by some of the other stuff that was put in that made it hard to see that? That's probably what happened. And we'll talk about that more in the negatives. But I will say that like, you know, there were different perspectives explored in this series. Were all of them great? Were all of them good? Did all of them belong? No, but the ones that I think he nailed were showing that they were all monsters and all victims in a way at some point. But yeah, those are my negative, my positives. Um, there's not a lot. As you can see, I kind of hit five. Acting, cinematography, set, prop design, pacing, and like one of the perspectives I think he nailed. So let's start into the negatives. And you know, if you need a break, go get your popcorn, a drink, cause it's gonna, it might be a long one guys. Not even gonna lie. Okay, first off, I'm just gonna start off with it. The homoeroticism in the show is not needed. I don't care if they were trying to explore like different reasons why the brothers might have done this. At one point, there's literally a table of people discussing why the brothers might have done this. And one of them says, maybe they were lovers. And we get a scene of Kitty finding her boys taking a shower together. And I'm just like, I don't think it's really the smartest idea to put homoeroticism in a show that's dealing with um, men who were sexually abused by another man, specifically their father, father, and then trying to do homoeroticism between the brothers. That is something I really don't think was needed and it just didn't make sense and it really would take me out of the story, enjoying the story. I think it was done in bad taste. I'm, I've am i seen people on Twitter say like, oh, he was trying to do this because of the fact that he was showing that the sexual assault skewed their ability to like interact with each other properly. Like they don't understand boundaries when it comes to intimacy, love and family. And I get that, but I don't think, even if he was going for it, he did that well. I don't think this was it, babes. I don't care how many ways you guys try to explain it to me. I'm not buying it. I, I, it doesn't convince me. I think 
that is a great perspective to explore, but not in this way. I feel like from what I've gathered and researched that the brothers have stated that like the sexual abuse like led, um, as we will find out, Lyle did at one point sexually abuse his brother because he was trying to normalize what was happening to him from his father. So he did at one point sexually abuse Eric. That kind of made them closed off. Lyle said it himself, his father hated Eric and so it caused him to hate Eric and treat Eric like shit. And so at some points their relationship was strained. So rather than them like crossing intimacy lines, wouldn't they be more closed off to each other because of what happened in their past? That's how I'm kind of seeing it. But again, those themes just don't make sense. Um, we also have queer themes coming out. There is um, scenes that talk about Lyle's or um, Eric's sexuality, whether or not he's gay or not. But the thing is, Eric Menendez has stated, I am not gay. He's actually married with a wife. And I don't care what you're about to say. Oh, just because you're married, it doesn't mean that you're not gay. If somebody tells me that their sexuality is they're straight, I'm going to respect it until proven otherwise. I literally said this in a TikTok and I'll still say it again. I'm not going to discredit or try to like poke holes in someone's sexuality when they've been straight up upfront about it. Why? Why do we need to do that? Unless you give me some hard cold evidence, which being raped and being sexually assaulted is not evidence. I'm going to respect their um, what they have said. So we're not even going to argue on that point. Again, I do not get why this was explored. I can understand like from the terms of Baby Reindeer, that was a good show that deals with a man who um, the lead character is a victim of sexual assault and rape and he grapples with his sexuality. And that's something he has to come to terms to. But I think that's a way better job of doing it than what Ryan Murphy was doing. I don't know what was going on here. And I'm sorry, this really took away from me enjoying the show, especially with the other inaccuracies. Like there were so many other inaccuracies. Like one, the brothers shot their parents from the behind. Like they were behind them. Um, Katie and Jose never actually saw who shot them. So having them shoot them, like having like, that's a big thing in the case. So, um, and I get maybe it looked better to have them like, confront their parents with the guns and then start shooting them. But of course, like we got to point out the inaccuracies. And again, like there were just so many theme like scenes where I just felt uncomfortable knowing that this is what they were portraying when it goes against like, again, everything the brothers have stated beforehand, everything that they have come out, whether you want to believe them or not, there's a way to go about it. And I just feel like the ball was dropped. And when it comes to the writing, I think the writing is where like the biggest faults are in this show. There's a disconnect for me in some of the writing and some of the ways these characters interact. The performances are great and the performances make the writing better. Like it makes it seem great. But like when you really get down to the nitty gritty, there's just so many like faults in this. And was I able to watch the whole season? Yes. Did I enjoy it? I don't think this is a show that you enjoy watching. I think it's a show that you watch and it you have to sit on it and you have to really think about like all of the things that are trying to be relayed to you. But I can't help and compare this to Law and Order True Crime, the Menendez murders, knowing what they did. And these are two different ways of going about this case but i still have to say like i think across the board this other version does a way better job at showing the story and giving you other perspectives than this one does people have stated that this feels like a twisted sick fantasy that ryan murphy had used this case in order to enact and i can't help but agree i think it's a show that you know if you're watching for the performances, you'll be hooked till the end. You'll want to see how it goes. But I don't think this is a show that you go back and rewatch. And that's a first for a Ryan Murphy show for me. I've rewatched Dahmer because the performances and I think the writing were stellar. It does, again, like I do say that it does upset me that they did not consult the families 
and that they went against their wishes and that's something that like makes it hard for me to enjoy the show fully but i think that was an amazing show but when it comes to the second season yeah they dropped the ball for me and other ryan murphy shows like american horror story they deal with very graphic very intense very adult mature themes i still feel like i can rewatch the shows though the oj simpson um american crime story um the assassination of gianna versace um impeachment those three in american crime story i can rewatch. were there a lot of themes that made me sit there and i'm like okay i need a i need a second yes but i still like the rewatchability on these shows nobody can deny i don't know if i'll ever rewatch this series again i don't know if i can just yeah so let's get into my final thoughts <laughs> If this is a show, like if you're wondering would I recommend this show? Not if this is your introduction to the Menendez brothers. No, if you've never heard anything about the case and you wanna watch and you wanna actually learn, I'd recommend a documentary or go and watch. But if you want a dramatization, the law and order true crime version. I don't, I'm sorry that I keep bringing it up. It's good. I feel like it does the, the, the brothers and the the case justice and everybody involved if you're already familiar and you're wondering if you should watch this show if you if you're a film and tv show buff like me i say for the performances that are given by this cast yeah watch it like the performances are amazing i definitely think that um everybody here killed it i wouldn't be surprised if everybody was up for awards and nominations going into this new award season would not surprise me. But if you're, I don't think this show, I feel like this show might get nominated for like best limited series because of the fact that it has Ryan Murphy attached to it. I don't know a lot of the series that he's done where he hasn't garnered a nomination, but do I feel like, ooh, let me fix my hair for a second. Do I feel like this is a show that I would recommend? No. And that's crazy because I honestly think on this on this podcast, I don't know if I've rec like ever said no like that. I've always said like, yeah, in some ways I'd still recommend like it's not this one. I can in good faith. I think for the performances, if you're watching for the performances, fine. But if you're watching as like a casual viewer, just wanting to like see a story on these brothers. No, this should not be your first. That's what I'll say. And yeah, so no, it's not Chick Flicks approved, unfortunately. <laughs> like, no. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry, Ryan. Like, you know, there's a method to the madness sometimes, but in this case, I didn't see it. And there's no way, I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid. I don't care what you put in it. I don't care how you serve it to me. This show dropped the ball, which, in the beginning, I was a little bit excited, but then knowing what I know about Ryan Murphy and what he does with the show, I got scared immediately. And then I saw that teaser and I was like, I have no hope and I was right. And it sucks to be right. But yeah, those are my final thoughts. I would give this series a 2.5 out of five stars. That's ultimately where it's gonna land. If you wanna talk about all the positives, yeah, the positives, they would get a four out of five, but I, everything else surrounding this show has just left a bad taste in my mouth. And I can't like, like I don't even know if I'll ever rewatch this series again, in my opinion. I don't really want to. So let's just get into my outro. I know, like this is so jarring going into that where, I don't wanna say I've shitted on this series, but I've just been highly critical. But let's just, let's just go into my outro. All right, guys. If you are new here and you want to keep up with me and all things Chick Flicks, I'm gonna have my socials right here. But on Instagram, my public profile is Alexis Otang and my show profile is at the Chick Flicks show. I'm on, I'm on X, I almost said Twitter, it's X now. X, I'm on TikTok. I have a link tree with all of my other socials. I have a blog now. I want you guys to go and subscribe to the blog because you'll get more content from me. You can also get my episodes on the blog. And wherever you're watching, whether it's on SoundCloud, whether it's on Spotify or listening for those last two, 
But if you're watching on YouTube, on my channel, or FAU Owl TV's channel, because I'm official show of them, please leave a comment. Please leave a like. Rate this podcast five stars because you love me. Maybe not. I don't care. But you still know this is a good show, even if, you, you know, you don't love me. It's a good show. You can't lie. But yeah, guys, that is it from me, Alexis. Um, tell me your guys' thoughts on this show. I am so open to discussion about it, how I feel. I love hearing other people's perspectives. Maybe you guys can help me see the show in a different way. But like I said before, I don't think that's a Kool-Aid I'll ever be drinking. But yeah, I want to hear from you guys. And thank you for tuning in. This is Alexis signing off of Chick Flicks. You guys have a good one. Bye.